Hello, everyone. I'm Zhu Wang from University of Waterloo. Today, I'm going to show you how we can use RFIDs for the soil moisture sensing. Before going to my talk, let me ask you one question. Did you know why we can eat watermelons in the winter? Yes, it is because of greenhouse. In a greenhouse, we can control the temperature, moisture, light intensity, and so on. Thus, the greenhouse can provide a good environment for plants in all seasons. It is reported that in 2022, the market value of a greenhouse is will be 1.5 billion. Here is a real-world greenhouse. Plants grow in pots with soil. For each irrigation, water is added into trees, and then they can water plants from the bottom of the pots. Usually, there are more than 100,000 pots in a greenhouse. Sensing the soil moisture is important because a good soil moisture level can keep plants growing well and saving water by up to 25%. However, the challenge is that we have more than 100,000 pots. It is impossible to measure the soil moisture of every pot. To better understand this challenge, let me show you the existing solution of soil moisture sensing. The first one is an empirical measurement by hand weighting the pot, which is very inaccurate. The second one is using a soil moisture level. Although it is accurate, but it's time consuming to measure the 100,000 pots. The third one is installing soil moisture sensors to pots. But the price of a sensor is much higher than the cost of a pot. So it's impossible to install sensors to every pot. Given those limitations, in this paper we ask the question, can we have a cheap and accurate soil moisture sensing system for greenhouses? The answer is yes. Here is our solution, GreenTech, a low-cost and accurate RFID-based soil moisture sensing system. By attaching two RFID tags to each pot, we can estimate the soil moisture level accurately. The cost of two tags is less than half a dollar. Our system has three advantages. The first one is a better free, low cost, and wireless, because we use a cheap commodity RFID test. The second is a high accuracy. The accuracy of our system is comparable with the dedicated sensors. Lastly, we reuse the RFID systems because some greenhouses have already used RFID to track their plants. Since our solution is using RFID, let me show you how RFID works. Here is an RFID tag. It is a cheap, battery-free RF reflector with unique ID. Since the tag has no battery, the reader transmits a high-power signal to activate the tag. Then the tag can communicate with the reader by reflecting or not reflecting the reader signal. For example, the reflection is 1 bit and the non reflection is, is 0 bit. When the reader receives the test signal, the reader not only decodes the test signal, but also estimates the received signal strings RSS and phase. RSS and phase are related to the tag to read distance. RF environment and the test antenna. Besides the RSS and phase, Passwork also proposed a new signal feature called Minimal Response Trash Code MRT. Let me show you the definition of this new feature. Recall that when a reader wants to communicate with a tag, the reader transmits a high power signal to active the tag. So now, let's consider a simple process. While the reader increases its transmission power from low to high, when the transmission power is low, 
the tag cannot be activated. So there is no tag response. When the transmission power is higher than threshold, the tag becomes readable. We call this threshold as a minimum response threshold. In other words, MRT is a required minimum transmission power to active the tag. Now that I have explained RFIDs to you, we want to know can we use RSS, FACE, and MRT of a tag for the soil moisture sensing. Let me show you the basic idea. Here is a setup. Initially, we attach one RFID tag to a port and deploy the read antenna on the ceiling. Then, we change the soil moisture by adding different amount of water into the port. For each soil moisture level, we match the MRT, RSS, and face of the tag. Let me show you the results. In this figure, the XSS is a soil moisture levels ranging from 6% to 82%. The YSS are MRT, RSS, and face. Here is the results. As we can see, the MRT, RSS, and FACE vary by soil moisture levels, which means that it is possible to use RFID for the soil moisture sensing. However, there, here is one question. Which single feature should we use? We, we aim to select a robust single feature. We don't use FACE because two different soil moisture levels may have the same face value. For example, in this figure, when the face value is two readings, the soil moisture could be either dry or white. We also don't use RSS because the variation of RSS are larger than the, uh, than the variation of MRT. To validate this, we compare the variations of RSS and MRT in a dynamic environment. To create the dynamic environment, we ask some people move around the experimental setup. In this figure, the XSS is the number of moving people, and the YSS is the variation. Here is the results. As we can see, the variation of MRT is only the half of the RSS. Thus, MRT is a better feature for the soil moisture sensing. However, there are two challenges when we apply MRT for the soil moisture sensing. Because changes in the RF environment and the port locations may cause variations in the, MR in the MRT, which results in moisture estimation errors. Now, let's look into the first challenge, MRT variations caused by the RF environment changes. To better understand this challenge, let me show you two benchmark experiments. The first experiment is conducted in a static environment. Well, there is no environment variation around the experimental setup. The XSS is the number of days and the YSS is uh, MRT readings. In the first half day, we measure the MRT of dry soil, so the MRT keeps a constant value. Then we add a large amount of water into the pot, so the MRT reaches its maximum value immediately. Then we leave the pot for a few days until the soil dry again. As we can see, in this static environment, the MRT variations are very small for both the dry soil and the wet soil, which is good. But let's see what will happen in a dynamic environment. We repeat the experiment in a dynamic environment where multiple people move around the experimental setup. Here is the results. As we can see, 
the MRT variations are as large as 8 dB, which can cause large moisture estimation errors. So, how can we solve this problem? To solve this problem, our key observation is that changes of the moisture levels are much slower than the changes in an RF environment. So, by using a simple low-pass field, we can remove MRT variations caused by the environmental changes. For example, the pre-processed MRT after the low-pass field in blue now has a very small variations. The ch second challenge is that the location changes of pores also will cause MRT variations, which results in moisture estimation errors. To understand the, this challenge, we conduct another benchmark experiment. One tag is uh, attached to a port. We fix the soil moisture level, but move the port over lamp locations and measure MRT readings at each location. In this figure, the X axis is the location index and the Y axis is the MRT readings. Here is the results. As we can see, although the soil moisture level is fixed, the MRT variations are as large as 10 dB, which is very bad because the 10 dB variation could cause a large moisture estimation errors. To remove this variation, we borrow the differential sensing idea of our previous work, that is adding a reference tag near to the sensing tag. But, but this reference tag is above the soil. So the reference tag is only related to the location changes. Well, the sensing tag is related to both the location and the soil moisture levels. Now, by calculating the differential MRT readings of two tests, the differential MRT in blue is almost unchanged for a fixed soil moisture level, no matter where the pot is located. So, differential MRT can remove the location variations. But, does differential MRT changes by the soil moisture levels? Let me show you some results. In this figure, the x-axis is the soil moisture levels and the y-axis is the differential MRT. Here is the results. As we can see, the differential MRT changes by the soil moisture levels, which is good. Finally, by fitting those measured MRT values, we can calibrate our system to find a function that maps differential MRT readings to the soil moisture levels. Now let me show you the implementation and the results. Our system is implemented with one reader, one reader antenna, and a city chip RFID test. Our system is tested in two environments, a lab environment with a single port and a real-world greenhouse environment with 30 ports. First, let me show you the comparisons between our system and the dedicated sensors. We have two dedicated sensors. The sensor 1 costs $10 and the sensor 2 costs $170. Well, our sensor is two RFID tests, which costs less than half dollar. In this figure, the X axis is a soil moisture estimation error, and the Y axis is a CDF plot. We get the ground truth soil moisture level by using a soil moisture level, soil moisture meter. Here is the result of sensor one. As we can see. 
the ninety percentage error of this sensor one is eighty is thirty eight percentage, which is very bad. Well, our results are in green. As we can see, the ninety percentage error of our system is over only five percentage, which is very accurate. Even if we compare our system with a one hundred seventy dollar dedicated sensor, our system only lost one percentage accuracy. So the accuracy of our system is comparable with the dedicated sensors. Now, let me show you a case study in a real-world greenhouse, where we test our system on 30 pots. Here is a setup. There are 30 pots in a 1.8 meter test 1.5 meter area. Since it is impossible to calibrate every pot, we use differential MRT readings of one pot for the system calibration, and then we apply the calibrated system to other parts for the moisture estimation. The greenhouse is interested in the below three moisture levels. The first one is the dry soil within one within zero to forty percentage. If the soil moisture is within this range, we must water the plants immediately. The second is the moisture soil within the range of 40% to 85%. It is an ideal moisture level for watering plants. The third is a wet soil moisture within 85% to 100%. It is an ideal moisture range for shaping the plants. We use a confusion matrix to show our system's accuracy to identify the three soil moisture levels over 30 pots. In this figure, the x-axis is the estimated moisture levels and the y-axis is the true moisture levels. As we can see, our system achieves more than 91% accuracy over the 30 pots in a real-world greenhouse environment. Note that we only calibrate one pot and test it on all the other pots. Now, let me conclude this talk. First, our system, GreenTech, is a low-cost RFID-based soil moisture sensing system, whose accuracy is comparable to the expensive dedicated moisture sensors. Second, our system, Green, green Tech, is able to make irrigation more intelligent and improve the productive, productivity of the greenhouses. Thank you, and I'm ready to take questions.